into the storehouse that they may be food in my house. Test me in this, in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the throw open the floodgates, hallelujah, of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. I will prevent press from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields shall not cast their fruit. Amen. They will not throw down their fruit, they will wait for you to pick them up. Right? Hallelujah.
to be partakers of the divine nature of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, O oh God, I pray this morning that your word will float, O oh God. That your word will find an entrance into the hearts of men and women in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you will touch us. I pray, Lord God, that you will revive and refresh us by your word and by your spirit, O oh God. For your word is truth, O oh God, and we shall know the truth and let the truth of God's word set God's people free this morning in the name of Jesus, free from all anxiety, free, O oh Lord God, from all oppression, free, O oh Lord God, from depression, free from sickness, disease, and pestilence in the name of Jesus. It's the word of God, O oh Lord God, that sets us free this morning. We thank you, O oh Lord God, as the redeemed of the Lord, by virtue of the blood of Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So we say so to the promises of God. Every promise of God in Christ Jesus has its name. And in Christ Jesus has it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Almighty God, we thank you this morning that there's only one person to whom glory and honor is due. And that is to Christ Jesus. We see you, Lord Jesus, high and lifted up. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning. We bless you this morning. We adore you, O God. How excellent, how mighty, marvelous, O Lord, are you. How mighty and majestic is your name, O God. The name of Jesus. So I pray this morning, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. As I yield and surrender myself, O Lord God, to be used as the vessel this morning, through which, O oh Lord God, you will share your word with your people. I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead me, guide me this morning in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will breathe life into your word. And I pray, Lord, that as the seed of your word falls in the hearts of men and women that have gathered in this place, and those that are watching us, O oh Lord, I pray, Lord, that our seed, O Lord, that will, O Lord God, grow and increase and will cause the people of God to be established in the things of God. For in righteousness we shall be established, O God. And we thank you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and all the people of God said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Come on, give the Lord praise in this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, just say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, thank you. That you rule and you reign. Father above, all power, all authority, all principality.
is a blessing. It is a blessing. It is a blessing. It truly is a blessing to be in fellowship with God. God who created the universe. The God who created all that we see. Amen. It is indeed a tremendous blessing to serve Him and to know Him. I love the words of the Apostle Paul, Oh, that I might know Him. Oh, that I might know Him. The glories of His resurrection. Because there's power in the resurrection. And it's actually, it is it is actually a shame how many of God's people, I wouldn't say shame, I, I think the more apt word would be disappointment. It's a great disappointment. How many God, of God's people can, cannot partake of what God has already given to us in Christ Jesus purely because of one thing and one thing only is ignorance. It's ignorance. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Truly, it is ignorance. People are ignorant. They don't want to study the Word of God. They don't want to hear what God has to say. But they hear what everybody else has to say. Because everybody else has an opinion. But what does God say? What is God's opinion? The Bible, through the words, of, through the mouth of God, God spoke his word and he said, My people perish for lack of knowledge. That is ignorance. Lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of my word. Knowledge of me, the God. Who created you. Don't you know that he loves you? Don't you know that it is his will to bless you? Don't you know that it is it is in God's plan, his greatest desire to prosper you and to give you all things? Yes, we may not have an all-together life, a life that's all together, but God will take the fragments, the pieces of your life. And he'll use that to create a, a wonderful masterpiece. The book of Ephesians chapter number 2 verse 10. The Apostle Paul tells us that we are the workmanship of God. We are his workmanship. So God is at work in your life. Though you look around you and you see that all you see is just pieces. But hey. Don't focus on the pieces. That's my word of encouragement to you this morning. Don't focus on the pieces of the fragments, broken, the broken areas of your life. But focus on Jesus. He's the centerpiece. Without, you see, as long as you're looking everywhere and everything else, it will remain like that. But when you look to Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He'll take those pieces and he'll begin to write a new story. Remember the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. When the Jews, the Jewish leaders wanted to stone her to death, Jesus, when they presented her case to Jesus, Jesus said not a word, but he began to write in the sands of time. And I believe that that is what Jesus will do if you'll come to him and you'll give him those broken pieces of your life. He'll take those broken pieces and he'll begin to rewrite the story of your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. That after all is said and done, remember the Bible also says he's the finisher of our faith. It is then that Jesus will speak on your behalf. And when you look around, you see there'll be no more peace. Because your life will be put together. And that is what God has come to give us in Christ Jesus. As a child of God, you are not an outsider. 
you are not a foreigner. That's my word to you this morning, is that you are not a foreigner. You are not a stranger in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. God has welcomed you into his kingdom. How did he do it? By demonstrating his love towards us. In that Christ Jesus went up to Calvary, spread out his hands, welcoming you. Say, welcome home. Is at that point when you come to the cross of Calvary and you see the crucified Christ who paid the price for you. She says, welcome home. Welcome to the family of God. It is then that the Father begins to speak to the angels and say, angels, my son has come back home. Angels, my child has come back home. Hallelujah. Praise God. It was in the garden of Eden that we find that the Father was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Take note in the cool of the day. Hallelujah. In the cool of the day, the Father was walking and the Father was looking for him who he had created, looking for Adam. And he said, Adam, Adam, where are you, Adam? Where are you? He says, I'm hiding. He says, why are you hiding? Because I'm naked. He says, who told you that you're naked? Have you eaten of the tree that I told you not to eat of? Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters in Christ, when you eat everything else other than the word of God, you expose yourself to the enemy. You become an open target to the enemy. Hallelujah. But we find again at the cross of Calvary, when Jesus was on the cross, we hear once again Adam crying out, Oh Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. He said, Verily, verily, I say to you, not tomorrow, hallelujah, not next week, not next year, but truly today you shall be with me in paradise. It is because of the cross that we have come. Come and talk to me. We have a way to paradise because of what Jesus did at Calvary's cross. Hallelujah. The saddest thing is that many people just come to the cross, but they are not willing to go beyond the cross because beyond the cross there is life. If you go and you see where that cross was, there's nothing on that cross. When you go to the tomb, there's nothing in that tomb. Hallelujah. There's nothing in that tomb. Oh, praise God. We find years and years and years People were looking, are still looking up to this day for the ark, for the ark of the covenant. Many um, expeditions have been done to find the ark of the covenant, but they forget that God said, I will make a new covenant with them in that day. Hallelujah. We find it, we find it in the Bible. The Bible says that when they entered into that tomb, praise God that they found that there was a napkin which was folded. A napkin which was folded. And on either side where he lay, on the head side, on the foot side, there was an angel significant or speaking of the cherubim that were upon the Ark of the Covenant. Because the old, the old had to be put away so that the new could come. That's why when the woman saw Jesus, Jesus says, don't touch me because I haven't yet been to my Father. Because I have to go to the mercy seat in heaven. It must be fulfilled in heaven. I have to take my blood. I have to take my blood and pour it out on the mercy seat in heaven. And after that, we find that Jesus appears to his disciples now with no blood. A body that has no blood, a glorified body. Because the blood is on the mercy seat. Speaking for you and I. Speaking for everyone that would believe in the power of his blood. Christ has come, ladies and gentlemen, to bring us back to Eden. I want to share with you this morning from the book of 
Isaiah chapter number 15. You go to Isaiah chapter number, sorry, 51. <coughs> Isaiah 51. When you're there, you say amen. Isaiah chapter 51. Praise the Lord Jesus. Isaiah 51. Praise God. I want to welcome this morning anybody that's visiting us this morning, visiting us for the first time. Welcome. Hallelujah. Who's visiting? If you're visiting for the first time, just raise your right hand so that you can see. Good morning. Welcome to you, sister. Welcome. Welcome. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And yeah, sister Tradition, welcome. I thought it was Anisha. You look so alike. Like twins. Welcome. Praise God. Welcome. And welcome to you as well, sister. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And welcome to everybody. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes, you know, listen, when Jesus was welcome, people received. Where people did not welcome him, there were no miracles that could be wrought. So it's a twofold thing. I welcome you, you welcome me. Amen. So it works. Praise God. Isaiah 51. <clears throat> and from verse number one, and I'll be sharing with you, telling you about. Being back in Eden. Eden is a wonderful place. Eden is a wonderful place. Let's go. The Lord says, listen to me. Listen to me. This is God speaking. Listen to me. You who follow after righteousness. You who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. You see, God can single you out. God can single you out and he can multiply you. He can single you out and He can increase you. He can single you out and He can cause you to grow, to increase, and to expand. Hallelujah. The word that comes to mind is to be enlarged. May you be enlarged in the things of God this morning. And then, for the Lord will comfort Zion. I'd like you to highlight that in your Bible. I like that. Embedded in your heart. The Lord will comfort Zion. He'll comfort Zion. Hallelujah. Your comfort will not come from man. Your comfort will come from God. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort His people. He will comfort those who are His. He says, for the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her, work, her waste places. You see that? All the places in your life that you consider to be a waste, God will comfort them. In other words, God will put the pieces of your life back together again. Say amen. Somebody. You may think that you know, it's probably maybe a family that has been broken or torn apart. But it is God who says, I will bring restoration. It could be somebody who probably lost employment. God saying, I will bring comfort to you. Come and talk to me, somebody. 
Hallelujah. You will comfort her waste places. Watch this. Highlight this. He will watch it. He first says, the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort Zion. These people. He will comfort all her waste places. See all those places of brokenness, all those places of dryness, all those places of disappointment, all those places of discouragement. God will comfort. God will fix it. I won't even say fix because he is a creator. He's able to take those ruins and he's able to create something new. He's able to take that which was thrown away and to make it brand new. You could be somebody maybe that society has thrown you away. I mean, everybody has a past. There's nobody who has a perfect past. We've all made mistakes in our past. But one thing, brothers and sisters in Christ, ladies and gentlemen, that I would like to encourage you in this morning is that don't base your life on your past because you are not your past. The Bible says as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So my question to you this morning is when you consider for yourself, if you look to the east and you look to the west, can you tell me exact, the exact measurement of it? You won't find anything on this earth that can give you the, that exact mission. And so far has he removed our transgressions from us. You get what I'm saying? So you've come out of that past. You are no longer there. You've been brought into his Bible says he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his light. So you are a child of the light, a child of the day. God will create for you a new thing. I say you create for you a new thing. You create for you a new you. It will be a new you. Somebody say that old me is God. Bye bye. You should remember that man no more. But you should look at the new man created in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. God wants to give you a good life. So he will come from all the waste places. He will make. He will make. See that? He's a creator. He will make her wilderness like Eden. You remember in the beginning when you read the book of Genesis how there was nothing on the earth. That it was empty. It was dark. You find as many people right now, probably in their lives, they find themselves in a dark space, in a dark space of time. And you're going through a trying time. But it's in that trying time that you must allow God to speak. You must allow God to speak. Because as soon as God began 
speaking. The Bible says it was darkness. God said, let there be light. But the original, the original of that, those specific, of that specific passage or text, it was, it was just light. Be. Light. Be. In other words, light exists. Light exists. The Bible says that there was light. Then we find after God had created everything, that God planted. God planted a garden. He planted a garden. Why do people plant gardens? If you go anywhere, you'll find there's some form of garden. When you Consider what a big difference a garden does. Consider a piece of land in which your home has just been built. And there's only weeds there. It doesn't look nice. So they eradicate the weeds and then they plant the grass. And we find that when the grass begins to grow, it looks different now. But it still doesn't look that appealing. But as soon as you begin to dig around and you create a garden, you just plant a rose bush. That's a big difference. It begins to beautify that property. It looks beautiful. It's beautiful to behold. You find often times. We find that people will drive past a home and they look at the garden. They'll even stop, make a U-turn to go back and look again. Say, what a beautiful garden. See, so garden is something beautiful. Now here's the thing, God, God, our Father, creator of the universe, He planted a garden. How beautiful that must be. There's no landscaper alive that could ever scaper, scaper land or property to equate to that which God had done. Why do people plant gardens? Very often it's so that they can also survive because that's where they get provision from. I mean, everybody you hear them complain. Oh, the price of potato. The price of tomatoes. The price of vegetables. I mean, you consider yourself. Consider the price that you're paying on vegetables today to a few years ago. You pay, you pay the exact same price as what you paid for meat. It's what you spend on vegetables. You find people, people, uh, they, build, they, they plant a garden for crop, for survival. Here's the thing. God has planted this garden, Eden. Then he creates man out of the garden. And he brings man into the garden, into what he has already created. All man had to do was to tend the garden. Here the Bible says, he will make her wilderness like Eden. Eden had provision for man. Eden had everything that man needed to survive. The Bible even says that there was water. There were rivers which flowed from Eden. 
flow from Eden. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what Adam lost in the garden, Christ gave us back at Gethsemane. You see, the thing is, he says, he will make a wilderness like Eden. Eden is symbolic of fellowship. Eden was a place of fellowship. That's why when you, you know, they often refer to people who love God as people with green fingers. You know what I'm talking about. They say, oh, that one got green fingers. Anything they grow, anything they plant, it grows. They have green fingers. You find that you go to some homes, you find that people have, have plants. I remember when I was growing up, there were some homes, it looked like a forest, but it was not the plants that they had. The plants that creep along the wall and all look beautiful. But here's the thing. If you ask any person with green fingers, they'll tell you they speak to their plants. They speak to their plants often. They speak to their plants. Now that speaking, it may sound foolishness, but that, that speaking, that is fellowship. That is fellowship. I once bought a plant. It looked so nice. I bought it at the store. I won't say the name because I'm not advertising. I don't advertise for free. <laughs> But I took this plant home. I watered it. It wouldn't grow. I bought that plant food. It wouldn't grow. And people told me, no, put it there, no, put it there, and it didn't grow. Eventually, I got so sick of this thing because the people who tell you put eggshells, put uh, tea bags, you know, all that. It didn't work. And then I forgot about this plant. I, I, I never remember it. It was gone. Forgot. One day I saw heaven to go behind the, uh, the room divided that we had and the lounge, the place to walk. There was this plant. Money. Leaves were green. And when I looked, there was something that was in the soil, a piece of paper. At that time, I think Kurt must have been about six years old. And he wrote, I remember it, it was a lesson of faith to me. He wrote, six years old, on a piece of paper, only God can make this plant grow. Huh? Come on, somebody. The six year old. Only God can make this plant grow. Everything that I could find in the store never worked. But here's a six year old that took a piece of paper and some ink and wrote some words and put it on the plant. And he tended that plant. He had faith in God that God would resurrect that plant. You see, so Eden represents fellowship. It's a place, it's a garden where God wants to speak to those who belong to Him, to those who are His, to tell you that, listen, come and talk to me, somebody. Would you read the book of Psalms? You find that you'll be far from affliction. You'll be far from tyranny when it comes. He says, only with your eyes will you behold the reward of the wicked when it comes. Why only with your eyes? Because you are seated together with Christ in 
in heavenly places. You are above the circumstances. So you are looking from afar. So you are far from that. You'll be laughing because he who is seated in heaven loves. Hallelujah. That is fellowship. That is what God tells you. You know, uh, I don't want to mention suburbs, but um, if you've watched that, pro that program, that movie, uh, The Lion King, if you watch The Lion King, you've all watched The Lion King. It's not a sin if you if you watch it. I've watched it. It's okay. Right? But here's the, the issue is that young Simba, when he was still young, Simba was the young lion. You remember that he sat with his father. You know, you know, they were sitting and looking off into the sunset. And there was some folk, you know, and that's where he was speaking to Simba and telling him about, you know, those places. You don't go there. And then people kind of took that and they kind of, uh, they tweaked it a little bit. And they said, what's that place over there? And then they started picking on certain suburbs we have. They said, no, oh, that's that place we don't go there. Okay, let me, let me pick one. Uh, okay, let's just do it collectively. They say, what's that place there? Oh, that, that's Newcastle. You don't go there. <laughs> you with me. So, in Eden, God wants to have fellowship. The God of him. Listen, my child. This is the way. Walk in Listen, my child, don't go that way, go this way. Everybody, you can see, much see, see, you're in the garden, see, everybody's way that way, the broad way, but this narrow way, there's things that are here, it's just for you, but those that are not here cannot but be for you. So even symbolic, the first thing, about fellowship, when God wants to speak to you, speak to you, that's what God wants to do, and the enemy will do everything that he can to keep you out of evil. How does he do that? You cut off every opportunity that you can get to hear the word of God being preached. You'll find many times people will be watching you're probably watching right now. You're going to change the channel now. Because that's what happens. They want, oh, it's a preaching in the church and they change. And you find people, before they even go to a church, they ask, how long does that church take? Yeah, you see, because you think God is a microwave. You put it in one minute and you press stop. Let me tell you. There's a big difference. You know the popcorn that you buy and you make it the old-fashioned way? The one where you take the pot, you put it on the stove, you put some oil there. Oh yes, you put some oil. And then you've got to put some heat. And then you take those little seeds, you pop it into the pot, you cover the lid. Here's the thing, God has you covered. No matter what you're going through, no matter how hot it may seem, no matter what the temperature may be like, you have the oil of gladness. It is the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes, the heat may be coming, but the greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Because it doesn't matter how hot it may be. Yes, it may seem as though that there's a lid over me, but God God is in control. God has me covered. Are you hearing me, somebody? There's a set time. There's a set time that you're going to start popping. I say you're going to start popping. The church of God is about to start popping. Oh, yes. It doesn't matter what the enemy may have brought against the church. I believe that in this hour and in this time, the church, the real church, the true church is going to start popping. Popping, popping, popping. Are you hearing me, somebody? There's a big difference between the popcorn that's made on the stove 
microwave and you just put it on for two minutes. Did you know, did you know, did you know that anything you put in the microwave, those waves within the microwave, did you know that those things cause cancer? Did you know that those things can make you sick? Oh yeah. This is for those Christians that want a five minute sermon. Glory, hallelujah, God is going to bless me, thank you. Amen. Let me tell you, when you serve God, you are not worried about time. When you serve God, it's not about my time. It's about His time. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. If you can't spend, if you can't spend an hour with God, right now, how are you going to spend an eternity with Him? If you can't spend an hour with God now, let me tell you, what you are saying is that I can't, I, I can't bear to spend an eternity with Him. Because your walk with God is 24-7, my brother. It's 24-7, my sister. It's not just something that you do on a Sunday to come and get a quick sermon and a quick prayer and you think that it's done and that it's finished. No, you've got to walk with God. You've got to talk with God. Oh, you've got to come out. You've got to be with God. Hallelujah. popcorn people out there. They want things to happen quickly. No, it'll take time. Yeah. Ask any gardener. They'll tell you. Seeds take time. There's some seeds you sow today that in a matter of weeks you can start eating. There's some seed that you sow today it'll take you maybe months, years before you start eating. Yeah. So it is with the word of God. The word of God is seed. God has given you promises. That's why as you spend time with the word of God, the word has been sown on the tablet of your heart, been sown on the ground of your heart. And every word that God has given you, it's coming to pass. It's going to come to pass. Say amen to that. So Eden is a place of fellowship. Eden is a place of rest. It's a place of rest. You are resting in God. You are resting in what God has already done. I mean, God didn't create Adam and then bring him in the garden and say, Adam, now listen, you see this, this one here? This is a mango. Uh, Adam, it takes so long for the mango, and you gotta wait so long before you can start eating it. That one day, Adam, that is now cabbage. Now that one, that one's gonna take. No, God created already. When He created, He created the finished product. That's why He says, "I am the Lord," declaring the end from the beginning. He created it already. Food. Adam saw how oh, mangoes. I can start eating. But as I eat, I want to remember, I want to sow. Are you getting that? Adam. Because if Adam just ate everything, he'd stop. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the offering. No. You've done the offering. Pastor Sheriff has ministered the offering. I'm not ministering the offering. And I'm speaking about this. You've eaten of the healing. You were healed. Your soul was healed. You love it above all else. I wish that thou mayest prosper. Even as thy soul prospers. Then you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You were healed. You were delivered from sin. You were bought out of the devil's workshop. Where the devil was panel reaching you this way, that way, and the other. God bought you out. God started now working with you. 
brought you out of that. So now, you got to start, how do I eat the healing? I've got I've to find the, the scriptures on healing. I've got to find the scriptures on restoration. I've got to find the scriptures that deal. You see, the more time you spend with the Word, the more you become acquainted with what is available in the garden. You see, salvation, we just think it's to be saved just only from our sin. But it's, it, it, man, it is so huge. It is so huge. It's such a glorious gift. That's why God desires that all men should be saved. He wants all to be saved. And it's only through spending time with the Word of God that you can see what belongs to the righteous. Do you understand what I'm saying? Remember what Jesus said in John chapter 7. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, from deep within his belly will flow rivers of living water. So I'm going to take the word, I'm in Eden, and I'm going to sow it in my heart. And as I sow the word in my heart, I can now become that river. Remember those rivers that flowed from Eden? And I can share this word with others, and others will be healed. Are you hearing me, somebody? Others will prosper. Others will be blessed. Why? Because I'm blessed. Oh, talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. You have a blessing that is upon your life that the world is waiting for. The Bible says creation is waiting. It is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Creation is waiting. It's waiting. We have a world out there that is waiting to hear a word from God. You don't know. Let me tell you somebody. That's why you got to look Jesus all the time. Otherwise you become like a Philip. Oh Lord, Shaka told Mama Hande. You say, I, Lord, I want to see the Father. He says, Philip, have I been with you so long yet you ask me? Show us the Father. He says, truly, truly, the words that I speak to you, what I'm saying to you, I'm not speaking by my own authority, but the Father that is in me, he does the works. Are you hearing me? When a child of God has the word of God in their spirit, that child is able now to go to the world and speak the word of God with God's authority. You speak with God's authority, with the authority of Christ. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, there's an authority in this world. There's an authority in this gospel. That there's no demon in hell that can stand in your way. You will speak to that mountain and it will grow. You will tell that mulberry tree to be uprooted and it shall be so. Hallelujah. Jesus said in his words, he says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying, somebody? The reason why we don't see the power in the church of Jesus Christ in the world today is because the church is not abiding in the vine. He is the vine and we are the branches. You cannot John 
sipping what I just quoted. It's like the Bible goes on to say, thus he spoke of the Holy Spirit whom those who believe would receive. For he was not yet glorified. And the Spirit of God, brothers and sisters, is with us today. He is within us. It's not like in the days of old, the Holy Spirit would come upon a person and he would go. No, he has come and he abides with us. He is with us. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. You have the Spirit of God with you. Not only is he with you, but he is within you. So you begin to speak, and it shall be done. So you become that word. First John chapter number five tells us we know that if we ask anything according to his will, what is his will? His word. If we ask anything according to his word, he hears us. And if he hears us, we know that we have the petitions we have asked granted unto us. You've got to pray the word. You've got to pray the word. You've got to speak the word. You see, Jesus taught us the secret in the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done. Your will, your word be done. In the heaven. Come and talk to me. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know what? You are in such a blessed position that you are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that you speak with authority when you speak you are speaking from heaven commanding earth when you pray you are praying from heaven commanding earth he says whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. How about you this morning? I know we bind sickness and we lose healing. We bind poverty and we release wealth. But how about you this morning say, I lose myself from every earthly world. I lose myself from every word that is contrary to the word of God that has been spoken concerning my life, that has been spoken concerning my family, that has been spoken concerning my future, that has been spoken concerning my destiny. I lose myself from all words of negativity. I lose myself from all words of doubt. I lose myself from all words of fear. And I bind myself to the word of God. I bind myself to the promises of God. Are you hearing me, son?
push through. Are you hearing me? I'm not going with the crowd. I'm not following the crowd. I'm going against the crowd. Going against the crowd. Against the grave. So I'm going to bind myself to the promises of God. Say amen to me. is a place of rest. Even is a place of peace. Hallelujah. It's a place of peace. It's a place of healing.
serving your eye. That word apple, that scripture, it says he who touches you, touches the apple of his eye. That word means the pupil. You know what's your pupil? Now as you're sitting now, try and open your one eye. Try it. Take, take the spectacles off. If you have spectacles, take them. Open your one eye. Just close the one, open the other, and try to put your hand and touch your people. You can't. You can't. Immediately, your eyelid closes. That's why. Then he tries to touch you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. If the enemy tries to touch you, he's touching the pupil of his eye. Oh boy. The pupil of his eye. That means as soon as the enemy tries to touch you, God closes. God closes. He can't touch you. He can't touch you. He can't harm you. He can't destroy you. The pupil of his eye. That's something to think about. I can preach a whole sermon. So Paul understood that in Eden there's healing. In Eden, nothing that's meant to harm me will destroy me. Anything that was meant to be a curse for me will turn out to be a blessing. Amen. Because I've been blessed. Amen. Remember, by like a baby, you can't curse whom God has blessed. Amen. Yet you find Christians today, oh, they, they're cursing me, they're cursing me, because you don't read your Bible. <clears throat> if you read your Bible, you'll understand how blessed you truly are. You'll understand that nobody can curse you. The enemy can't even curse you. The only thing he can do is get you to curse yourself. That's what he does. He gets you to curse yourself. In Eden, there's healing. In Eden, there's blessing. In Eden, there's blessing. In Eden, there is great prosperity. I want to close with Colossians chapter number three. It's food for thought. Verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you, richly in all wisdom. Let the word of Christ dwell in you, richly. Why? Because the word of God, brothers and sisters, more precious than rubies. It's more precious. It's more precious than gold or silver. More to be desired is the word of God than any earthly riches. This word is a mind. to dig deep into the 
word of God. You have to mine the word. You have to explore the word. And as you mine the word, that word must become a mine word to you. And that's a play of words. It's a mine, M-I-N-E, you know, like a gold mine. But as you mine, as you dig into the word, and as you ex, you excavate the word, it has to become a mine, M-I-N-E, in terms of possession, word to you. So you have to mine the mind to make it mine. Because only when the, this word becomes a mind to you, only then will you know its power. Only then will you know its authority. And it has to be a mind word. Because when it's a mind word, no body on this green earth can convince you otherwise. Because it's a mind word to you. You become like a Noah. The people will look at you. And people will mock you. And people will call you all sorts of names. And people will say things to you. Or they'll say things about you. But you've got to understand that you are a Noah in your day. You know, you know, you know. You know that there's a day coming. There's a day of reckoning coming. Are you hearing me? Someone is sick or someone is at the point of death. You say, yeah, 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 be 
because of they did this, because of the, oh yeah, you God, you know everything about that person's life. You know what they did from the time they woke up this morning. You even know whether they had Kellogg's or whether they had Maltabella. You, you know that. And you know what they did before they went to sleep. That's why you can say, yeah, because of this, this, this. The Bible says you should go on your knees and you should have compassion on the weak. You should pray for them. You should bring them before the Lord. I'm just thinking now, how many people are dying prematurely because people are not praying for them? When we hear an evil report, our hearts should be like we are mine. Oh Lord, comfort Zion. Comfort Brother Solomon. Comfort Sister Solomon. Comfort Pastor Evangelist Solomon. Comfort them. May they desert places like, like Eden. Do 
desire the sincere work, the genuine work of the world. He goes on to say that you may grow thereby. So that you may grow. God's plan is that you should grow. God's plan is that you should flourish. God's plan is that it shall be well with you and your children and your children's children. He says, with long life will I satisfy you. And I mean, you know, sometimes you consider yourself to be old, advanced in, in years. But you know when you spend time with God, He renews your youth as the eagle. You know there are folk who are serving God for a very long time. And you look at their age. I'm looking at some of you here now. There are people in their late thirties, early forties, that look older than you. Because out there in the world, out there in Eden, out of Eden, out there in the world, out of Eden. There is battering, there is hammering, there is strain, there is stress, there is everything bad under the sun. But in Eden, there is rest. In Eden, there is rest. That's why people will look at someone and they say, wow. It's in Eden. 
thing that you learn how to live a long, successful life. Joshua 1 verse 8, God speaking to Joshua. This book of the law shall not depart from you, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that it may be well with you, and that you may prosper wheresoever you go. Boy, you need somebody. You're going to take the word, and wherever you go, the word will produce. The word will produce. The word will produce. I see the word producing for you. I see the word producing for your family. I see the word producing for your business. I see the word producing for your job. I see the word producing for your finances. I see the word producing for your health. I see the word producing for your marriage. I see the word producing for your children. I see the word producing. One minute in and for 
forevermore. In Jesus' magnificent name, and the church of God said,